So first, I want to give you all an opportunity to quickly uh, introduce yourself and, and share a quick uh, description of what you're working on with ide Identity. We'll start with you. Well, I'm Jordi Bailina. Um, I'm the tech lead in Iron3. And uh, yeah, mainly what we are doing in Iron3 is trying to solve identity. But you know, when talking about identity, it's like a huge spectrum. And we are, we are working mainly in the in the basic in the infrastructure layer, just identities, claims, and proof on those claims, and trying to bring that uh, with privacy and, and scalability on that. That's mainly what we are trying to solve, to just try to get to, to, to put in place a protocol for that uh, basic layer. Cool. I'm Adam Stallard. I am with Bright ID, and I think that we need to bring self-sovereign identity to the masses. Like you said, everyone has an identity. They need to be in control of that. And I think that there's some amazing applications that can come out of that. One being universal basic income on a global scale. So I'm excited for all the things that identity will bring to the world. My name is Ruben Heck. <coughs> I work at Consensus and um, I'm one of the co-founders from Uport which is one of the early uh, projects in the space uh, focusing also on building identity on the Ethereum network. Um, our focus in the beginning was very much like building a tool for people to interact with the blockchain, but I think it evolved into a much bigger like self-sovereign identity uh, system, <coughs> which I think is a very core part of an enabling into this ecosystem when we, when we deal with individuals, but also I think talking about identity about entities and devices and, and other things. So I think it's a very broad topic we need to cover. And my focus now in, in, in consensus is really to connect the different identity related products we have and work with the community on like really making sure that everything works for the use cases we all are working on. Cool. Um, and so building off of that, you mentioned a little bit that you, know, you started with one conception of identity and then it kind of expanded a bit. And now you're even talking about devices and stuff. So just so, so uh, the audience has some context, uh, when you say identity in your project, what, what does identity mean? What is the definition of identity to you? Just so we, we're on the same page when we say that word. In our case, uh, yeah, uh, as I told before, you know, I, for us, identity, you can, you can think very much. It's not exactly that, but you can think an identity as an account course, account probably linked to something that's unique, something that can take decisions for itself that's that just as a single entity. But, but uh, from the, the way that we are working, we are working in digital identity. We are working in identity that at the end is represented generally by an account or generated by, the, by a number. And this can do things like signing things, do actions, or maybe can do claims or even the people can do claims over that identity. Sometimes we, we can talk, we can even talk about Passive identity, you know, a chair is it, it's half an identity by itself, and the people can make claims on that chair. So, on the chair, we can say that half identity, but the chair cannot uh, cannot sign. Or, for example, when we are talking about uh, um, uh, um, companies or we're talking about associations, they have also an identity. They can take decisions as itself. So if you want, they have a number, okay, and they can they can call tether, they can vote, they can take decisions on that, they have an uh, identity. So when we are talking about the identity, mainly is about the representation of a real in identity in the, in, the, in the space, in this case, in the blockchain, and as an account or something like that. I'm sure that, that uh, yeah, you can, you can, so you can <coughs> explain. Uh, you want to go first? Yeah, sure. So <laughs> for Bright ID, um, there's a very specific aspect of identity that's very important to us, and that is are you a unique individual within whatever subsystem we're looking at? So if we're looking at a large system like the entire world, then if you're unique in that, then you're also unique in any subsystem. And that's really important to us uh, to really try to connect the whole world and see, uh, be able to know whether someone is unique in that extremely large system so that we can use it for all these other smaller cases. Yeah, I think we need to do <coughs> a bit more work on how, how we synchronize on our terminology because I think often when we, from a Uber perspective, thought about identity, you might have multiple identities. Nice. Your gaming identity, your right now, legal identity of other forms. And when I talk about identity, I typically um, associate like an identifier and data because ultimately your identity is 
the interactions you have done, the, the reputation you gained over time. So in our world, it's really important that um, we do this user-centric and you can collect um, trust because you interact with many people in a verifiable way. And trust is so important, as we all know, uh, for most of the other inter interactions you have in, in, our, in our world, not just in our space here, but just generally. Mm -hmm. Clearly, uh, a reputation system and identity system they are mainly the same. People define identities as, a, as, as, as the set of reputation that the people have. So I would say that probably reputation is a subset of identity. So mm -hmm. not everything is reputation. Identity is even a wider set. Yep. But uh, clearly, reputation can be rep very good represented. Yep. I, th I think maybe just one comment. I think we, we all came from the very user-centric aspect, which I think is a, is a core place. but. Um, in the conversations, when you think about DAO, like, okay, we have the concept of, like, all these entities that might be companies, and, like, we often, like, in, in for, like, demo and, like, others, okay, yeah, whatever, this is company X, and they're signing something, and now we all know, but let's say companies are very complex uh, creatures, like, how do you know who in this company are actually authorized to do certain things? So it's a very complex system, and the second, I think, um, topic we often don't think about is how do I actually map a real entity like um, LLC to a smart contract address or to a digital identity? So there's a lot of like questions. How do we make this mapping and who is supposed to do this mapping? Like yeah. back to like who is the authority to say that this address actually is whatever ABC consensus.net or consensus LLC. This is probably uh, um you know, a concern, especially when you are starting a new system like that. that is, we, we're starting and we create an identity, and identity is just like a, as a set, as an account. An account is there, and is that an identity? It's very difficult to that. But if we think in a world where there are like millions of identity, uh, m millions of claims, uh, where, the, where the people is absolutely interconnected, and uh, you know, people is talking with each other, and it's like everything set. I think this problem is not going to be a that problem because the people, the, the reputation system will be set already and uh, nobody will have doped who is who and which identity is, uh, belongs to which uh, real identity. But I fully agree that uh, this step from where we are now to get to a point where all those yeah. millions of claims uh, set up this uh, reputation it's the. It's, a, it's I the think the bootstrapping of this of this web of trust. I think once we're there, then I think it's very great. Challenge. <laughs> yeah, I think here Probol will have to start a little bit centralized with probably some trusted identities that uh, you know certific probably certification authorities or some individuals, and this will set up uh, a point. But the web of trust and the you know these rep the, the reputation systems and when there is start being a lot of claims. Decentralized, infra uh, decentralized uh, certification authorities will become mm -hmm. less important, and uh, you know the reputation system will be the one that will uh, manage the, the the full system. But yeah. that's just a vision. That's just how I, I see the, the, the yep. future. And that's great. So, Ru Ruben, you, you started going into this a little bit when you were talking about uh, DAOs and and mm -hmm. the identity as it relates to the company and and how do you verify who in the company actually you know say makes a claim or, or does something um i'm wondering i want to hear from each of you um why do you think that identity might be or or is important in the context of decentralized organizations um, we talk a lot about how the blockchain uh enables you know pseudonymous interactions and and, and some people even have the 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 ideal of anonymity, but but when it comes to to companies and where where people are interacting with each other, is necessarily an identity. Wh 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 how how do you think identity plays into the the DAO conversation? So I mean, you could see in some of the other demos that we've seen in some of the talks that when all you see there is the Ethereum address, people feel kind of lost. It's like, well, who am I dealing with? And then they, you know, you have to go somewhere else to check and and see, well, okay, this, is this a person? Is this a contract? If this is a contract, who's behind that contract? And so, um, yeah, I mean, it just gives us a sense of like where we're at if we know like the people that are involved. So, I mean, it's just natural to us. So if, you, if we can do something like, it, like you were saying in a DAO, if we can bring in some of this outside information, like we allow people to attest that this is my Twitter handle and this, you know, this is me on, on GitHub, 
and you bring that into a DAO, then it gives people kind of that feeling of, of centeredness and feeling like, okay, yeah, I know who I'm dealing with here. And, uh, and then there's also the uniqueness aspect, which is in, in s some important applications like uh, making a vote or something, you want to make sure that even, you know, per someone didn't bring in like 20 different Twitter accounts to, that are really to the same person. I th yeah, I think besides that, <coughs> I think the DAO will likely operate in many aspects fully digital, which is fine, so you can interact fully between systems, but once you have some real, like real life uh, interfaces where, okay, someone agrees to pay rent to the system, so how do we know it goes actually to the right company? How, like the, the link of that system into the physical world is extremely important, mm. and maybe the other way around as well. So if we, if we can see and think about DAO systems which um, make decisions based on sensor data of some kind of releasing funds because we did the right things, I don't know, pollution is going down, whatever, whatever the things would be. So the, the link in both directions are extremely important and um, it sounds always very easy, but like, okay, it's a device and we just measure it, but how do we know it was the right device and it hasn't been tempered? It's actually measuring the, the temperature at the right location. And I know there's lots of projects out there, but it's still like all these bits and pieces are extremely important for making the right decisions um, or, yeah, in the DAO. And there is also for the DAOs the, the, the governance of the DAOs. Right now, we can create governance systems in general, one token, one vote, or something that, so some governance system that's based on tokens, that's available because you don't really need uh, identity. But when you want to create more sophisticated uh, governance systems, where you want to put the human factor in, in there, uh, then things like, said again, reputation or uh, identity or being a person or being, a, I don't know, that you are a member of a community or a other, all this extra information that's related to identity that's very important for the design of the governance systems of anything, but especially for, for, for the DAOs. That's also a very important part. Identities is very important. Well, uh, there are a lot of examples, but if you see any, how many applications can you see that they don't have a login page? At the end, a login page is just uh, saying which identity you are. Yep. So that's, <laughs> it, it's important, you know, it's key. Almost all dApps yes. will need some sort of identity. Yep. Probably the cryptocurrency is an exception. And, and it, I think in more and more things like use cases when you have legal agreements of some form of in, in, in a more traditional way, I think we need to bootstrap as well the world. Like the world will not flip from yeah. today analog <laughs> to DAO. So how can we make this like sequence? Like Open Law is one of the projects. They they um, automate some pieces of the um, of the legal agreement into a smart contract, but 99% of the cases are likely never like net ne never need an execution, and you can keep them in a like a digital paper form instead of putting them in all code. And it can be a transition over time, hopefully. Mm -hmm. and, and certainly, uh, since I identity is very important in contracts, you know who the parties to the contract exactly. are, you mm -hmm. need that in the digital yeah. world, yeah. too. Um, so building off of uh, some of what you were saying, Jordi, about, about um, uh, identity's importance in governance, um, w one thing that people are really excited about with decentralized organizations is, is voting. and, and, and giving people new ways of participating in, in uh, kind of social structures. Um, but electronic voting is a notoriously hard problem to solve. <laughs> in fact, there's like an XKCD comic that came out a few months ago that was like, you know, th they were asking people about voting and, and, and the computer scientists were like, please God, no. Like, <laughs> it, um, and, and, and definitely not with a blockchain. Um, <laughs> and, and so there's, there's, this, there's this noted skepticism amongst people that have been working on electronic voting for a while about, about just the, the potential for it to, to even work in practice. But I'm, I'm wondering, do you think that part of the problem is, is the lack of a good digital identity system? And, and if so, um, how, how do you think identity could help solve some of the problems with, with electronic voting? B voting is, uh, at least until now, it's very difficult. And when you hear about electronic voting, just uh, you need to be very, very, very skeptical about what's going on. But what's clear is that this technology, of course, uh, used in the right way, uh, it gives a lot of hope for electronic votes. And even if we cannot reach some levels of, uh, let's say, 
security or reliability, it gives a clearly a step, a higher step for getting a very, very um, pro so good systems for, for voting where no central authority will be required. Electronic voting have other problems. Some of them related in how you warranty that there is no Trojan in your computer, or even how you warranty, for example, that a vote is not sellout or uh, coercivity, coercivity things and all that stuff. And these are more social problems. They are not easy to solve. Uh, they are still there. But uh, right now, uh, at least the blockchain gives the opportunity to organize a full uh, voting system without the requirement of a trusted centralized uh, uh, voting authority, you know, that, the, the authority that organizes the, the, the vote. And this is, I think, it's a huge step forward for uh, voting. Of course, scaling is important, identity is important, it's a, it's a step that we need in there. But uh, yeah, I'm, quite, I'm very optimistic that in the future, most of the voting is going to happen uh, in some sort in blockchain. Yeah, so I think it starts with how you decide who's eligible and the method that you go about doing that. And right now, that is not, I mean, none of that happens cryptographically at all. And so that would be the first step is you'd have to, uh, when you're determining eligibility, you'd have to have some way to cryptographically sign that. And uh, so, I, I mean, but things change. Uh, but like in, in where I live in Washington State, it's all done by mail. So, it, you know, there's, I've heard people say, oh, that could never be done, but that's what we do. Um, and you, know, you look at uh, like e-passports, that's like kind of an evolution of the passport where you had to, you know, now they will, at the time that you're getting your passport, they will uh, cryptographically sign that, that you are receiving that passport. And so that's, you know, steps like that are what we need to do to be able to evolve to having, um, you know, electronic voting work. Yeah, I, I think the opportunities are obviously massive, but I think if we think about this on a large scale, um, with sovereignty comes a lot of power and, and also responsibility to the end user. And we see this in the crypto, like Coinbase is great and does a lot for the ecosystem, but it's not what you ulti ultimately like it thought it, w it should look like. So I think the, the, the questions around UX key management are just so hard. And, and even for that crowd, it's hard-ish. Um, I think if you, if you think about like, in a voting system where you need to have the whole range of the population being able to do this in a secure way. Because offloading your voting system to someone else is also a bit scary. So there's a lot of questions how we actually um, built the right systems around this to make this user friendly. Privacy preserving and obviously censorship, like the, all, the, all the things we are like as, as values. It's just that it will be a, a tricky and likely one of the hardest things to solve if you think about more like national votes. I think we can vote obviously in DAOs and we can experiment with many things, um, but it's, it's a hard problem to solve it for like the 100% population. But the tools are there. You know, the, I think that there are good new, new tools are there <coughs> and this can be put in place for creating more secure voting systems sure. in, the, in, the sh in the, at least medium term for sure. And, and continu continuing along with that, that theme of talking about some of the challenges with voting, I, I'm, I'm interested in hearing from your project's perspectives, what are the biggest open challenges that, that you have to, to seeing your project succeed? At least in, in our case, we are working a lot with the zero knowledge technology. We are going very deep in the Zika SNARKs. We have developed some tools and we are going there. We, we are seeing that, uh, you know, just uh, running, Z so generating proofs in the mobile phone or generating huge uh, snark proof uh, in big clusters. This is uh, very challenging. This is very much where we are working hard uh, right now, at least in this technology, and this is where we are working. Also in the protocol design, it's interesting because even when we are thinking and rethinking and seeing, you know, all the communications, uh, identity discovery, uh, how, the, how the identities will talk one each other, uh, how they require for a proof, how they remove for a proof. We see that there is like a, a lot of uh, things that needs to be defined. It's, and creating this, this infrastructure layer is what, uh, 
well, what, that's what we are working on. I, I think well, we, we will create for sure. We, will, we want to create a proposal for a, for a protocol. We, are, we want to create also the, you know, the, the reference uh, implementation of that protocol. And of course, in an open source manner, and this is ex what we are dipping. We have a full team that's working on that, and, and we, we are running to, because we need it. We need it uh, as a community, we, we need it, and that's at least we want to have a proposal on the table. That's that's the the, the goal. That and, and the, my all my strength is trying to to push. So for Bright ID, it's it's mostly a social experiment, and it's the biggest risks are the social risks, and we just want to see what happens if the right social norms will grow up with this project and and allow it to exist at a large scale, even a global scale. Um, the, like the technology pieces are there to, to have peer-to-peer -peer attestation and, or, and for this to possibly work. And we can, we can protect against large-scale civil attacks. Like, like, I feel confident about that. But th like the social aspects, this is totally new territory. So I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm excited to see what, what happens. And it's definitely a worthwhile experiment for me. So that's why I, why I do it. Yeah, I think <coughs> looking across the different projects on identity, and, and in particular also in Newport, I think as I mentioned, UX is still one of the hardest problems. So key management, we mentioned, we talked about this, but also like now you can gather all this data. Now you have it, whatever, on your phone or on like, and like now the user needs to make sense of like what am I sharing? Like, yes, you can agree. We have lots of good ideas, but I think um, this is a tricky one. I think also scaling is a challenge, but I think with some of the new designs we have started to build, uh, where you don't need to have a transaction image to create an identity, makes, I think, many things way easier in the beginning. Um, and there are some really interesting discussions happening um, within the space. So there's the Decent Identity Foundation as, a, as an organization which brings people and teams who are working on that vision um, together um, from different communities, which I think is an is interesting and good because there we are, I think, demonstrating like cross blockchain activities because I think identity is such an um, important element that even the choice of chain or whatever it is should be in, in the in the in the hand of the user. Mm. So there's some really interesting things. And yes, if you talk about interoperability and everybody has their own ideas, you need to find the right balance of like focusing on getting your things done while still like working with other figures. It's a network effect. Ideally, we, we find a mechanism to work together that if people are using a Uport identity, they can as well go and use Yolocom in the next situation or Ident3 in the next one. So it needs to be something where I can decide to quit. I don't want Uport anymore. I want only Bright ID in the future. So this is part of the sovereignty part. So interoperability is kind of a core value into the system itself for me. This is the basic protocol I think is key. And this yeah. protocol cannot come from a single entity. You know, yeah. it, it must come from the community. It must come from people that's working on there, that's doing proposals, trying to see what they're achieving. Maybe a pair, two models, or three models. But sure. it's important that we make a, an effort to, <coughs> to, you know, to, to try to set up a yep. protocol so that we can build on top of that protocol. Yeah, I often compare this with like, if we build an email client, and whatever the backend system is, that's fine. Or, or like we can't build the WeChats and the, the Facebook messengers. We need to build something which works as independent because I can always decide to switch. Uh, it's just super important. Exactly. So, so I want to end on a collaborative high note there and, and turn it over to the audience for questions. Um, does anyone have any questions for the, for the panelists about identity or identity and DAOs? <laughs> Wow. Nice, nice oh. catch. Nice catch. <laughs> so um, my question is about um, identification, because we keep talking about these keys, right? But none of you guys have talked about pretty simple stuff like biometrics and, and the ease of identifying yourself as yourself if your body is with you, right? Uh, so how do you see that fitting in? I'm very, uh, I'm very sceptical of biometrics. Of course, biometrics, you can have like a claim that saying, somebody saying that the, your biometrics are this. So this is implicit. But uh, biometrics are something that you cannot replace on yourself. And if they are leaked in some way or the other, this is extremely dangerous. And I think that uh, 
at stations, just the yes. uh, claiming system is more than enough and yeah. for, 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 for working. But that's yeah. a, a no, I, personal I opinion. But, uh, no, it's mine yeah. too. <laughs> I think we're skeptical of like putting anything public or any on anything with biometrics. I think biometrics are great to protect the keys which are on my phone. Yes. That's great. But um, I think there are obviously, I think the questions of like, okay, uniqueness and other things, very questionable um, concerning uh, proposals sometimes uh, in the space. So I'm also very um, careful. Yeah, one, one, one phrase I like to say about biometrics is biometrics are like a username, not a password, because <laughs> you can't reset your fingerprint. Mm -hmm. Sure, that's right. Um, anyone else? Wow. Nice. <laughs> Impressive. Um, hi, um, I'm a lawyer from Malta. Um, I just wanted to say that when you have identity, um, you might also have autonomy and potential also self-awareness at a later stage. The reason I'm saying this is because um, I spoke to Daimler last year, and uh, they are actually considering uh, giving a separate identity, identity to, their, to their trucks, which would be connected in an IoT system. Now, if you have self-awareness, of course, you might potentially also need to consider legal personality as well. And again, this is, of course, something which might be attended at a very advanced stage of, of thinking. But again, if we're talking about identity, sooner or later, you might also want to, again, consider the legal repercussions, um, which is why currently in Malta, we're, we're working on a new law which will grant legal personality to decentralized autonomous organizations. And potentially, that might be the first step towards, again, trying to think of different cells in a DAO, which might potentially be autonomous, as well as perhaps segregated one from the other, yet part of the same ecosystem. So I don't know what your thoughts are about trying to cross into the legal border of things when thinking about identity in a DAO. What's the question? Question. So did he repeat the question? So, so <laughs> Just the so question part. Yeah, um, uh, essentially, if we're talking about identity in a DAO, um, uh, and uh, let's say that particular piece of the puzzle in a DAO um, is capable of doing, let's say, certain things, both inside the DAO and in a cross-DAO fashion as well, do you think that certain uh, legal repercussions might start to, uh, to be thought about? If, uh, let's say, one particular piece of a DAO enters into a smart contract, let's say, with someone, uh, another piece, another DAO, what would be the, the legal ramifications of that? So do you think that, again, is it something worth thinking about at this stage? Um, I, I can <laughs> say that. Uh, I, I think we, we talk a lot about legal ramifications in general terms, and I think we, we, just because we're building some tech doesn't mean that law disappears. Yeah. So not in that specific case, to be honest. Like, crossed out, they haven't thought about this yet. But law, enforce, law enforcement governments, they are other identities and they are doing claims. And they are not different than the claims that is doing one or the other. At the end, it's about reputation or if you want, uh, that a lot of people just believe that the law is something that we have to follow and they accept that. But at the end, our, uh, everything is identities, everything is claims. And of course, there is these governments or know, judge or you know, other entities that are identities and of course they have a powerful uh, they can give a powerful claim but from the identity system it makes no difference the identity system in the blockchain it makes no difference at all a claim made by a government that a claim made by the fake uh, by, by, by a fake identity uh, about something stupid in things the claim is exactly the same yeah. you can prove that claim later on that the specific identity made that claim on that other identity and that's, that's, that's the, the nice thing of, the, of this uh, digital, the decentralization identity. We are democratizing identity. Yep. Everybody can become a certification authority. Mm -hmm. everybody, everybody can be, it's able to make claims. Of course, governments too. And this is, I think this is cool. So I think, maybe just, uh, I think we just assumed that everybody understands claims. I think <laughs> it's a cryptographically signed statement about the other identity, and, and that's kind of the web of trust. Like other people can attest that I was on this panel, or at least some people can. So, and because I sign it with my identity and with my, with my signatures, then over time we are building something which is not just data, which we, we have today, but data which is actually really verifiable from um, anyone who's receiving it and can see, okay, this was given from... 20 or 100 people, which makes the, li like the chance that this was faked extremely low. So that's, that's going to be it for seconds. today. <laughs> Thank you all. <laughs> Thank you Thank all you for guys. joining the panel. <laughs>
Thank you.